Welcome everybody, my name is Andreas Meyer and I'm hosting the Pattern Recognition Symposium. Today I have an exciting presentation for you given by Michael Lechner entitled Detecting Polymer Optical Fiber Elongation Events. Michael, the stage is yours. Ah, okay, okay. So then I start right away. So this talk today is about my side project. And yeah, as you can see from the image, it's um, about preventing slides, landslides. Um, well, well, those can usually happen at disposal sites or on embankments at railways or motorways. It is also a huge topic in open cast mining or uh, to prevent sinkholes. And every time when you have um, uh, the slope that cannot be vegetated, what you usually do is you um, embed a geotextile into the ground um, to strengthen the structure and prevent it from sliding. So uh, preventing it from sliding is the one thing, but the other thing is you want to um, monitor what's going on down there. And this is where this project um, comes in. We use uh, optical fibers um, that are measured by an optical time domain reflectometer. And with this device, we can see what's going on down under the ground in theory. So uh, what's this device doing? The um, optical fiber is well transporting light and we have a, a small light emitter, it's a laser diode in the OTDR which sends a light pulse through the fiber and we have a photon counter detector that can measure the amount of reflected light and as you know um, how fast the light is traveling into the fiber when you time your detector you can um, get precise measurements of how much light is reflected at each position along the fiber so you get then a nice measurement curve that looks like this it starts and then you have a constant uh, backscatter until the end cap and here most of the light is reflected as you can see in this nice steep peak. Uh, the one nice property of those fibers is if you um, stretch it at any point this increases locally the amount of um, light that is reflected. The effect is the Raleigh backscatter and this can be measured by this device and well yeah we use this to detect um, possible uh, movements as early warnings. So um, for this, we had a really huge setup where we um, took those fibers and yeah, glued some stoppers on them and attached them here to a table where we have a pull motor that stretches those fibers. And at the same time, we have our measurement device um, to, me to measure what's going on. And yeah, it's a pretty tedious process as um, taking one complete measurement cycle of a whole fiber takes about 10 minutes. And we have a lot of parameters to cover. Um, we varied the position, the um, length of the section that has been elongated that is also sensitive to the surrounding temperature, um, the humidity, and of course, the uh, speed at which the um, changes are applied. So those are very many parameters. And we, yeah, it took us almost a year to gather a data set with, which covers all those parameters uh, to some amount. So, um, when you think of detecting those little um, peaks, 
the most simple approach you can think of is a very old um, algorithm, the QSAM algorithm. Um, I, I just sum it up very quickly. Um, if you have a, a process and this process is in control, it emits data that follow a normal distribution, which is uh, mostly true for our data. So um, when everything is okay, we have um, the measure data with a certain mean and certain standard deviation. And once we disrupt this process, the mean and the standard deviation change. And what, what this algorithm basically does, it um, calculates the um, conditional likelihood um, of our measurements regarding those um, two distributions, and then sums the results up over time. And once we hit a certain threshold, um, yeah, it's time to ring the bell. If you're further interested, um, there are many papers out there. Um, this is a nice small uh, summation of it. You can, when you can read it. So uh, regarding the threshold for this parameter, um, this threshold um, the, um, is kind of the trade-off tuning parameter where you can trade off the, the amount of lag, so the time needed for the algorithm to detect the changes um, versus the um, precision or here measured in the F1 score, how, how good your um, quality of the detection is. And uh, as you can see with this basic algorithm, we flat out at about um, 0 0.76 um, score at a uh, relatively yeah, moder moderate lack of, yeah, what's this, 60. So the um, question is, can we do better? Um, of course we can do better. Um, we uh, used a simple LSTM, which was trained on our data. Um, in order to train it, we cropped um, random patches from our data. So um, in, in both in the spatial and the temporal domain, so random offsets along the fiber and also during our, our measurement um, cycle. Uh, yeah, this was fed into the, the LSTM and we basically um, wanted a binary classification that prints out whether here something happened zero or we have an ongoing elongation, then it's one problem is. This is uh, highly imbalanced as we have way more uh, data where nothing is happening. And so I also looked into various techniques um, for those imbalanced problems like subsampling, um, focal loss, or the recently proposed um, class balanced loss, which builds on the focal loss. And yeah, these are the results. So our baseline is simply um, binary cross entropy. And we can see uh, regarding the um, precision of our forecasts, we um, beat the um, base algorithm always and also uh, improve on the, on the time lag. Um, one thing, this is um, where Vincent was right, um, good old subsampling um, does the job most of the time. Um, focal loss somehow falls a bit flat and only the recently proposed um, class balanced loss addition um, helped us to reduce the um, amount of lag a bit further. So um, this is it compared to our baseline. So we can see um, that we um, well, can substantially improve um, the quality while having um, yeah, the, a certain amount of, of lag. So uh, this, I'll skip this for the talk. Um, 
as this is ongoing investigation, I also want to do um, the prediction, not just where the elongation happened, but um, to which amount. So um, yeah, this is ongoing task. Uh, in the future, I also want to try convolutional LSTMs instead of LSTMs for these problems, to see whether I can get some increased performance from it. And then it's time to assemble a prototype system as we plan to build a real demonstrator for this project. So now, um, uh, can you see the VLC player? Yes. Ah, okay, thanks. So to give you an impression of what it looks like to the right side, you can see the input data um, that uh, we receive. And the left side is our label in blue, um, that, which marks where the elongation happens. And red is our network's prediction. So, and if we run this, you can see the time steps up here. You can see um, the data is super noisy. But uh, nevertheless, um, after a short amount of time, the network finds now where the elongation happens. And yeah, to the human eye, it's, well, probably, I would say by now, visible where it's actually happening, as you can see that now the peak is getting clearer and clearer. But uh, remember, um, one time step is uh, 10 minutes. So this is actually a well, huge time span. So that's it from my side. If you have any questions.